Good morning, YouTubers. Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. Well, it may not be morning for you, but it's morning for me. Getting ready to start off the day. We're getting ready to head into work and work on our Ram 3500 cab chassis build again. We've got some neat stuff going on for that. We're gonna do some fender trimming. We're gonna be installing some fog lights, custom wiring for that one, and putting on some tires. We had Ron uh, working on those for our uh, Toyo mud terrains that we've got going on these things. Big meaty sons of guns, and this thing's gonna be a kick-ass thing. We're gonna get it done today, so you guys stay tuned. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. First things first, customer opted for us to do the trimming on the inner fenders because as you can see, it uh, it actually sticks down quite a bit below the fender level and out. So when you see it from the front, it just, it don't look right. So we're gonna get a nice even line that cut straight across from here. Follow the uh, line of the inner fender down here. You guys can see from here straight up pretty much across to the corner, make it nice even so it follows that angled edge of the bumper in the same time. So we're gonna be doing that one now, mark it, and we're gonna cut it with our uh, new Sawzall that we just picked up today. Let's have a look at this thing. This is my new Milwaukee M12 line fuel, a uh, little hacksaw, or yeah, hacksaw. Came with a 4.0 uh, battery for it. Uh, this thing's pretty badass. I've used it just a little bit this afternoon and this thing eats. It thing is uh, pretty, pretty nice. It's uh, compact enough to do what I need to do. Uh, I didn't really want to use one of the the round cutoffs just because I wanted something nice and straight and even. So this is going to be able to do that for us. <laughs> the inner fender all cut out so now I'm just gonna kind of take a knife here real quick and we're gonna trim that inner fender get all the fuzzies and stuff off but looks a lot more nice and flush and even next up we're gonna be going with the fog lights we got a couple of different ones here we've got one uh, these pairs from rigid uh, this is gonna be a really cool spot light so we've got a pair to go on each side inside the little flares of the bumper we've got one spot um, cube and then we're gonna have one full, uh, full um, the flood style cube. The spot we're gonna put on the inside portion right here, and then the flood we're gonna put on the outer. So it gets a lot of nice ambient light out towards the outside of the vehicle. And then as you can see up in here, up there in the bumper, there are nice slots that are already in there for the fog lights to be mounted. The last thing that we're gonna have to utilize is we wanna utilize the factory harness for the fog light system so we can just plug it right in and if we need to unplug stuff in the future, that's where we've got a test point at. So then we'll be able to have those all plugged in nice and neat and then our factory ones, which are just kinda of hanging out here now, will be able to be tucked up nice and neat up in the bumper with a factory harness. Let's get to wiring that. 
So one of the lights that we had come with a nice uh, set of pigtails for it. The light we've got here, we're going to be wiring our female connection in on. We cut the ends off and then we've got some nice butt connectors with some heat shrink and solder point in the middle of them. These things are really nice to use in a pinch like this one. And then on the side that has the harness for the vehicle, we're gonna have the male side of it that we're gonna put this connector on. So we'll have each of the, uh, the pair of fog lights together here, fogged onto, or uh, plugged into one connector. So we just gotta unplug one connector for those two, and that's for the whole side. You're gonna have one connector per side. That'll be, uh, that'll be how we'll run this one. So we'll get soldering these on. So now we've got all everything connected here, as you can see, our heat shrink with solder that's a low temp solder with a butt connection in there. If you guys haven't used these before, they're kind of pricey. They're about a dollar a piece that you can get through like a Tifco dealer, and, but they save a lot of time and they're super strong. I know JRC54 did a review on some of the as seen on TV versions of those last week and these things are like tons above in the uh, quanti quality aspect of that one. So those are really nice. And then on the factory side of the harness here, we've got our mail connector, which is gonna be this one right here. So we're gonna put the same thing to put these two together. So we got, we'll be able to have our factory style harness that'll plug into our factory connector right here which will plug right into that harness that we have already existing in the truck. So if you have any wiring diagram issues down the road or somebody else does, they can follow the same wiring diagram to get to the fog lights just like they would need to. Now I know we're gonna have to get these things all lined up after the fact when we get them all hooked up and lined up down the road, uh, but I think these things look damn good. We've got the spot there and then the floods on the outside to illuminate everything in the peripherals. I think they turned out pretty darn good. That's in the uh, factory spots for that grumper. Looks pretty darn good, guys. Now we'll get the uh, wiring harness and we'll get the other side in. Now after getting the wiring harness all nice and routed up into place, we've got it zip tied up into place up in the fender well here and goes up into the frame and then across the front bumper. And it actually goes into the front channel inside of this area of the front bumper. So it's all tucked very nicely inside of there. We've got the excess harness up in there and then as you can see, 
our electrical connector is a factory electrical connector tucked up in the frame and the electrical connector for the fog light on this side is zip tied up above in the fender well as well and then we've got our fog lights all nice mounted up here we still got to do some aiming for those but they look pretty darn good and the best part I tried them out and with using two fog lights on either side it does not set a lamp out indicator so it must use enough amperage to be able to keep that indicator from coming on and we're gonna get these things aimed up and see what they look like now last piece of the puzzle we got our Fab Four's bling to be putting on Well, I'd say this kind of sucks, but it's super fitting that it should uh, start this build in the cold and shitty weather of Ohio, and it ends in the cold and shitty weather in the realm of Ohio. It kind of sucks, but here it is. We got the nice walk around going here. Um, the only thing that we wanted to point out was when you order the kit from Fab Fours, you do need to order a uh, kit for the plug stops for the front sensors if your application does not have the front uh, park sensors. The other thing to notice is that the front park sensors, there are six holes in the bumper, and the kit for some reason only comes with four of them, which I don't really get that one, but that's how it comes. We got all the fog lights, everything all lined up in the front. The only thing that I'm gonna recommend to the customer is possibly matching with a set of LED headlight bulbs as well. That'll be something really neat that I think would just fill out the whole project altogether. But all in all, this thing turned out absolutely freaking awesome. With this customer working out in the oil fields of West Virginia, this is gonna be something that's gonna be really awesome looking. It's gonna be super capable. It's gonna be able to get him anywhere off-road that he needs to go. These Toyo Mud Grappler tires, they are mud terrain tires. They just, they are super meaty. They're not really meant for a whole lot of great road use, but they're gonna grip and rip off-road. He's gonna be able to take this thing wherever he wants, whenever he wants, it isn't gonna matter. That and being a uh, nice Laramie edition, he's going to get there in a little bit of style. The Hillsboro bed turned out really awesome. We really like what uh, they do for a product. It turned out really nice from our upfitter. And then that grumper is not something that you guys normally see. So it was something cool that we were able to show you how it goes together, how to custom fit it, get everything fitting just right into place. It turned out really nice. If you guys enjoyed the content that you guys saw today, make sure you guys scroll down, hit the subscribe button on the channel. I try to come out with some awesome content like this as often as absolutely possible. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with some cool, awesome content for you guys to enjoy. Make sure you hit the like button if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Either way, I'd like the feedback just to see how I'm doing. Another project in the books, and I appreciate what you guys have been doing for the channel lately. Just cleared over 11,000 subs. That is something that I didn't expect to get to. We also have some shirts available for some channel merch over at Teespring. I will put the link down in the description below on that one. Also, make sure you guys stay tuned. This coming weekend, we're going to be uh, going up and visiting big old JRC54, doing a live stream with him, doing some question and answer for you guys on the difference between independent shop life and dealership shop life so stay tuned for that one it's going to be something awesome i appreciate it again thanks guys and you guys stay awesome